Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about some questions that you should ask your sponsoring real estate broker. Now, if you've been following along, you know that I've been interviewing my real estate brokers for the past couple of weeks, and I've been doing my due diligence, making sure I ask the right questions, and making sure that the broker is gonna be a you know, good fit for me before I end up choosing who I sign with. It's important to know, and it's a common misconception that when you're interviewing with real estate brokers that it's like a normal interview where you're, the broker asks you a bunch of questions and you have to answer them in a way to make them want to hire you. But in reality, it's kind of different in the real estate world. The brokers generally want as many agents to join them as possible. So during the interview, they're going to be selling you on why you should join their office and they'll give you an opportunity to ask a bunch of questions to help them convince you that their office is the best fit. My name is Dan and on this channel, I'm going to be talking about my journey as a real estate agent and I'm going to sprinkle in some personal finance videos too. So if you enjoyed this video so far, please consider subscribing to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. It will really help out the channel and let me know that you guys are enjoying videos like this. So let's get started guys. I'm going to start with the first few questions, uh, the ones that I think that are most important. And definitely these are not the only five questions that you should be asking. Certainly there are more than five questions that you should ask the broker during an interview, but these five I have narrowed down as probably the most important. And based off of the, uh, the response that the broker has to these questions, you can ask follow-up questions and certainly do your research and ask as many questions as possible to make sure that you're comfortable with the office that you end up choosing. All right, so question number one, you should ask the broker or the managing broker of that office what their background is. You want to make sure that the managing broker and the person that's going to be overseeing you, what their experience is in the real estate world. You want to make sure that they were successful when they were uh, in, a, in their past life as a real estate agent. You don't want to be working for someone who maybe sold real estate for a couple of years, only really sold a couple of or had a couple of transactions during a couple of years. You want someone that's sold hundreds of houses, knows the ins and outs of real estate, knows <laughs> know how to help people and teach people you want someone that's there for the right reasons and will help guide you along and help you become a successful agent too so definitely ask them what their background was were they a real estate agent how successful were they why did they choose the office that you're interviewing for right now like why did they choose to work for that company and maybe their reasons will align with whatever you uh, whatever your reasons are as well so for example, you ask them, why do they join you know, Compass or Coldwell Banker? And they say to you, oh, it's because of a good pay or if it's because of a good commission split. If you're a new agent or new real estate agent like me, maybe those aren't the same reasons why you wanna join this brokerage. But if they are able to tell you, sincerely, I joined because even though the splits weren't as great, but they offer a bunch of mentorship, they have great company culture, they really want young agents to succeed and they want to help as many people as possible. Maybe that's a better, um, a better response, especially if you're a new agent, that will really help you. And you know, having that culture and that people that surround you help you succeed will be a great thing. That's definitely question number one, guys. And we're going to move on to question number two. Now, the second question is how many agents are currently working under the managing broker or at that office? Now, if that office has two to 300 agents, that may be great on paper. It may seem like there are a bunch of agents that want to work at that office and are staying around and not, you know, there's not that much turnover, but it could mean that the managing broker doesn't have a lot of time for individualized attention for new agents, new agents joining like, like you or, and me, because if there's 200 people texting her, emailing her, calling her every single day, or him or her, how, you know, how do you expect her to respond in a timely manner? Is she gonna be able to respond within an hour, within a couple hours? What if you have something that's urgent? Is she gonna be able to respond? Can she offer that help to you and guidance, especially when you're scared, when you're a new agent, what are you gonna do, right? I do wanna mention uh, on the flip side, if there are too few agents that are working at the office, that could be you know, a red flag or it could be something you should consider as well. If there are only 10 or 20 agents, try to find out what the reason is. Is it because the broker is, you know, everyone's leaving 
because they don't like working there? Is it because they're a new brokerage or something else? I suggest finding something in the middle in terms of the amount of agents that work at the office. You want there to be a good number of agents because you know that agents want to work there and want to stay there. But you don't want there to be too many agents because you want the brokerage to, or the managing broker to give you enough undivided attention and help when you need it. Now on to question number three, and this might be one of the most important questions, at least in my opinion, when I was interviewing the brokers, I think this is gonna be a huge factor in the decision making process. And the question is, what are you gonna do to train me as a new real estate agent and help me get my business off the ground? There are two types of trainings that most brokerages will offer. And one of them is one of them is going over all the paperwork and the admin stuff, offer sheets, presentations, and stuff like that, which is all really great, but do they also offer training that will help you get your business off the ground? Now this is in terms of marketing, understanding social media, understanding branding, understanding how to get leads and generate leads. What do they offer you in terms of training for that? because at the end of the day, that's the kind of training and the stuff that you need to do to get business and start making money as soon as possible. So I hope that makes sense guys, but I'm gonna move on to question number four and that is, what is the company or office culture like at that office? Is it a close knit community? Is it a family feel when you're in the office? Are people open to communicating and helping each other out and helping each other become successful agents? Or is it really an environment where everyone keeps themselves and just are competitive and want, are honestly quite selfish and just want their business to succeed over everyone else's? Now, it really depends on what you want in an office, but me personally, I want, well, especially as a new agent, I want it to be an office where everyone is willing to help, is willing to lend a hand or give you some leads if they have. Now, obviously, if they give you leads, you're gonna have to split part of the commission with them, but Certainly, if it means learning the, learning how to become a real estate agent, you shouldn't worry about splitting the commission. That's kind of what I would look for. I would look for an environment where it's open or conducive to people helping each other out and you know, ask what they do. Maybe they do, do some, maybe they do some charity work as an office. Maybe they go out and have fun um, every couple of weeks or maybe at the end of the year. Maybe that's an environment that you want to be in and that's certainly one that I want to be in too. So that's an important question when you're asking the sponsor and broker, make sure that they give examples of what they do uh, to help new agents out, help each other out, and have fun too. And lastly, I consider this question to be the least important of the five, in my opinion, but it could be the most important one for you. And the question is, what is the commission split going to be if I work at this office? Now, it's important to know that if you're shopping solely on commission split, it may not be the best thing to do, especially for new agents you might find an office that gives you 100% of the commission compared to an office where they give you 50, 50 of this or 50% of the split. Even though they give you 100%, are they gonna help train you and become a better real estate agent? Especially when you're, or especially if you're new and you have no idea what's going on. If you make no deals in the first year and they give you 100% commission, that is still equivalent to zero dollars. If you do, let's say, $100,000 of sales in the first year and you're working at an office with 50-50 commission split, you still bring home $50,000 and that is a lot more than zero. So now that we got that clear, it's important that you know, even though an office might give you a 50-50 split, you gotta make sure that you're getting what you're paying for, right? So, because at the end of the day, you're paying that broker 50% of your commission, but what are you getting you know, as a trade-off? Are they really gonna offer you that mentorship and training, or are they just saying that? You wanna make sure that you're giving a higher commission split away to this broker, but you're getting enough value back where it justifies it. So you gotta find the sweet spot between the commission and also how much value you're gonna get out of the commission that you're gonna be paying the broker. So hopefully that makes sense guys. Please let me know in the comment section below if that made sense to you or if that helped you in any way in terms of asking or interviewing sponsoring brokers. I know it's kind of a scary process and it's all diff and it's different for everyone. Uh, it was definitely different for me when I was interviewing them. I quickly, quickly learned that it's really me interviewing them and not them interviewing me. So definitely keep that in mind and definitely do not make a decision unless you've interviewed a couple of brokers you'll understand and better compare and contrast each broker 
or the more inappropriate is that your interview. So, so again, hopefully that helped you out guys. I'm going to be posting a video about the broker that I ended up choosing in the next couple of days or maybe it's already up there when I post this but maybe there you'll find out why I chose that broker. Let me know in the comment section below again what do you guys think and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Peace.